2012, the O'Farrell government announced that the long-awaited North West Rail Link would proceed, but only as a privatised metro-style operation. The line will stretch from Epping to Kajigong Road. 15 kilometres will be in tunnel, but that tunnel will be deliberately built to a diameter just 40 centimetres too small to accommodate City Rail's standard double-deck trains. And the existing Epping Chatswood line would be handed over to the private operator of the North West Rail Link. And that's not all. The Epping Chatswood tunnel would be modified so it too could no longer be used by City Rail rolling stock. The decision to construct the North West Rail Link only for metro style trains has been promoted under the slogan Fitness for Purpose. But is metro really suitable for the North West Rail Link? Not at all. Metro evolved to solve the problem of big old, heavily developed cities, where it was prohibitively expensive to bring suburban rail right into the historic core. We're talking about cities like London. The solution was to terminate suburban rail outside the city and transfer passengers to small trains typically running underground. By having most peak period passengers stand and by running the trains frequently, they made it work, after a fashion. Metro functions best in cities of this type, over trips of less than 10 kilometres and with stops every kilometre or so. But this formula doesn't answer Sydney's problem. Ours is a relatively low density city, where most commuters have to travel much further. The trip from the North West Rail Link's Kajigong Road to Chatswood will be, for example, 37 kilometres and it's another 10 kilometres to Central. Sydney was a late developer and was able to avoid the problem metro-style rail was designed to solve. Thanks to the intervention of Dr John Bradfield, we were able to bring our heavy suburban rail right into and through our central business district so that outer suburban commuters didn't have to terminate and transfer to metro. That's a priceless advantage that shouldn't be squandered. Can metros carry more passengers than modern double-deck trains? Absolutely not. One of the more bizarre lies of the campaign to privatise the system is that City Rail's double-deck trains could never achieve five-minute frequencies. The Infrastructure New South Wales report backing the single-deck argument says that single-deckers must replace double-deckers in order to achieve 30 trains an hour. And it states that the double-deck Paris RER lines have a maximum capacity of 25 to 26 trains an hour. Nick Griner must think none of us can use Google. In fact, Paris RER runs 30 double-deckers an hour in the peak, one every two minutes. And they're progressively dumping single-deck trains in favour of double-deckers. And why? Better quality of service and greater capacity. And it isn't just Paris, with the energy crisis driving commuters back to rail in unprecedented numbers. Far-sided rail operators are ordering double-deck rolling stock like never before. The double-deck solution, which began in Sydney in 1963, is spreading around the world. The proposition that double-deck trains can't run as frequently as single-deckers is a nonsense. But the North West project team go further. They even told Ecotransit each proposed single deck train will carry as many passengers as a double decker, working on the basis of four passengers per square metre. Four passengers per metre for a long commute? That's going to get pretty steamy. Surely we don't want it to come to that. 
Our double deckers have about 40% more floor space than equivalent single deckers. This gives them 50% more capacity under normal loading conditions and 33% more crush loading capacity. In either case, they've got 100% more seats. And that's important if you're only travelling from Hills to Macquarie Park, let alone Kudjigong Road to Chatswood or the CBD. All Northwest Metro passengers will have to change at Chatswood. Trouble is, most peak period city rail services arriving from the north are already full, or nearly so. Even if just 500 passengers get off each Northwest train, they're going to start piling up on Chatswood platform, unable to get a ride south. Perhaps the Metro project team is counting on what's known as the Tokyo Solution. This video is, by the way, an excellent demonstration of how quickly and efficiently single deck trains load. So let's demystify the politics of the North West Rail Link. As we've seen, the plan to build the line as a metro style link and to convert the Epping Chatswood Tunnel to metro isn't about transport efficiency. It's an entering wedge for the privatisation of the city rail system. The key players are Nick Greiner and Rod Staples. Nick Greiner, the Infrastructure New South Wales Supremo, we all know. Less than one term Premier, cigarette manufacturer and self-styled father of the urban toll road. But who's Rod Staples? Staples is the archetypal bureaucrat who rose without trace. He's an engineer, but he seems to have had no great experience with rail planning, construction or operations before being hired as Railcorp's General Manager Network Development in 2005. But he has a business master's degree, so he knows what has to be done. He's a man obsessed with the vision of a privatised, metroised rail system. It's hard even to find a decent photo of him, but this one tells a story. That's Rod in the middle, explaining his CBD Metro plan to Premier Nathan Rees. The then Transport Minister David Campbell looks worried, as well he might. He's no doubt recalling that Staples' previous scheme for a North West Metro has already ended in debacle and helped bring down Premier Morris Yemmer. The CBD Metro was another circus, a case of propose first, plan later. It was just a line sketched on a map when Staples sold the idea to Nathan Rees, who bought it hook, line and sinker. The CBD Metro was wildly unpopular. When Rees fell and Keneally replaced him, the whole farce was quite rightly terminated. The direct cost to the public was over 400 million, and then there was the indirect cost of lost federal funding, and that was probably a billion. Not many careers have survived a debacle like the CBD Metro, but Rod Staples is clearly a survivor. Let's let Gladys Berejiklian, then the opposition's transport spokesperson, now the minister, have the last word. The government itself has mentioned that the Metro will be running on empty in the morning peak by up to 87%. Why are they building this project? Why are they building this project when all the transport experts are saying it is not in the right place, it is not the right project for that area? We are concerned that they're pushing ahead. Today's EIS and the processes that they've adopted demonstrate they are desperate to move this project along as soon as possible without any regard to the community, without any regard for what is in the best interest of public transport in our city. But in spite of this, the O'Farrell government let Rod Staples loose on the North West Rail Link project. Of course, there's a difference between Rod Staples and Nick Greiner. Staples at least wants to build rail, 
Whereas Griner is a tollway man and probably wouldn't care if there was never another rail line built. And the North West Rail Line will be in competition with the M2 tollway. The North West Metro decision came out of the blue. Transport Minister Berejiklian had repeatedly assured the public the line would be an integral part of the Sydney system. Reading between the lines, it seems likely she could only keep the project alive against Griner's opposition by adopting Staples' privatised, metroised version, because in principle it would be hard for Griner to fight a privatised solution. The decision to build the North West Rail Link so it could never be used by modern double-deck rolling stock is a grave mistake that should be reversed. But leaving aside the issue of double-deck versus single-deck trains, Sydney's most pressing rail capacity issue lies between Chatswood and Central. And that's not just an issue for North West Sydney, because the Staples plan would see this missing link built only for private metro trains. And to go along with that would be disastrous, because with two more tracks in this corridor, accessible to modern double-deck rolling stock, we can increase by 50% services to over 200 Sydney stations. So let's not sacrifice the potential of what's actually a world-class suburban rail system on the altar of a privatised metro fantasy. In the energy poor future, we're going to need every bit of public transport capacity we can get. <laughs>